2.2 Evaluate and Graph Polynomials A monomial or sum of monomials is called a polynomial. f of x equals ax to the n plus a to the n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. So we can see that the exponents are going down. This is known as a polynomial function. If it's going to be a polynomial function, this is important. These are the rules. Exponents are whole numbers. What are whole numbers? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to infinity. Okay, so whole numbers. The exponents are whole numbers, and the coefficients are real numbers. The coefficient needs to be real numbers, and the exponent needs to be whole numbers. Coefficient of x, the number in front, needs to be a real number, and the exponent needs to be a whole number. Remember that whole numbers, start at zero and go to infinity. A zero degree is a constant. For example, we could have that f of x equals 7x to the zero. That is a constant. Anything to the zero power equals one. So really, f of x equals seven. That's a constant on the y-axis, y equals seven. A linear function is a degree one. A quadratic function is a degree two. So we're looking at the degree, the highest exponent that you see in the function. A cubic is a degree three. It doesn't have to have x squared x. It doesn't have to have everything in between it to be a cubic. You're looking at the highest degree. So this would be considered a cubic. A quartic, can you take a guess what that's going to be? A degree four. And again, you don't have to have all of the terms in there. This is the highest exponent is a degree four. And so that would be a quartic. Decide whether the function is a polynomial function. So this will determine if it's a polynomial function. Those are the rules. Whole number exponent, real number coefficient. That'll tell you if it's a polynomial function. Decide whether the function is a polynomial function. If so, write it in standard form and state its degree, type, and leading coefficient. Looking at problem A, my highest degree is a degree four. I'm looking at the exponents to make sure that they have whole numbers. And I'm looking at the coefficient to make sure they're real numbers. One, negative one fourth is a real number. So yes, this would be a function. Degree four, highest exponent that we see is a degree four. What type is that then? That would be a quartic. And what is the leading coefficient? That would be with the highest degree. The leading coefficient is one. Problem B. We have g of x equals 7x minus the square root of 3 plus the pi, pi x squared. Okay, so is this, where's the highest degree? The highest degree is a degree 2. We need to make sure that it's a polynomial function. Do we have whole number exponents? I see 2. I see 1. So yes. This is not going to have an exponent because it's not a variable. All right, so this is a polynomial function. 
write it in standard form. That means in descending order. So that would be pi x squared plus 7x to the 1 power minus the square root of 3. The degree is 2. The type is a quadratic. And the leading coefficient is pi. Is this really a polynomial function? What is the definition of a polynomial function again? We need a whole number exponent, which we check. Did we check to make sure that the coefficient was a real number? Is pi the leading coefficient or just a coefficient? Are all of these coefficients real numbers? What are real numbers made up of? Real numbers are made up of rational and irrational numbers. So the real numbers are made up of rational and irrational numbers. Is pi a real number? Yes, it is. It's an irrational number. It's a decimal that goes on forever. So we are okay on this one. It is a polynomial function. Problem C. Is this a polynomial function? Do we have real number coefficients? 5, 3, negative 1, yes. Do we have whole number exponents? 2 is a whole number. Is negative 1 a whole number? No, it is not. Whole numbers start at 0 and go to positive infinity. Not a polynomial function. So we don't need to answer any questions if it's not a polynomial. Problem D. Is problem D a polynomial function? We have some weird things going on here. What stands out to you? Is it a polynomial? Does it have real number coefficients and whole number exponents? Here's an exponent, x, and it is not a whole number. Therefore, it is not It is not a polynomial function. Example 2. f of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 4x plus 8. We need to evaluate by direct substitution when x equals 3. Direct substitution. So when x equals 3, that would be we're looking for f of 3. I am showing what it is that I'm trying to do. I'm not just giving an answer. And now I'm going to use my calculator to help me out. We have 2 times 3 to the 4th, get out of the exponent, minus 5 times 3 to the 3rd, minus 4 times 3 plus 8. Just checking to make sure I substituted it incorrectly. Looks good and we get 23. When x is 3, we found that y was 23. Evaluate by using synthetic division. All right, the steps for synthetic division. Write in descending order, 2x to the fourth, to the third, to the one, and 8. We're missing something here. You need to have, when you're dividing, you need to have all of the x terms here. We have x to the fourth, x to the third, but we're missing x squared. We need to fill in a zero for x squared. So descending order would be 2x to the fourth minus 5x cubed plus 0x squared 
minus 4x plus 8. x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x to the one, and the constant. If the constant is missing, you need to fill in a zero. Whatever the degree is, you need to make sure it goes all the way down to a constant. All right, write in descending order. Check. Write the coefficients of f of x. Okay. The coefficients of f of x are 2, negative 5, 0, negative 4, and 8. Remember that this is x to the 0. So 8 is technically a coefficient as well. Check. Write the value to which f of x is being evaluated on the left. So over here, I'm going to make a little box. What number are we trying to evaluate? x equals 3. So I'm going to put 3 in the box. I'm going to draw our line. Bring down the leading coefficient. Here's the leading coefficient, 2. I'm going to bring it down. Multiply, 2 times 3 is 6, then add or subtract. It says negative 5 and positive 6. So 6 minus 5 is 1. And you repeat that pattern. Multiply, 1 times 3, add and subtract. Multiply, add and subtract. Multiply, add or subtract, whatever the signs are. And so we get 23. This means that when x was 3, we found that y was going to be 23. We just did the same problem twice. Once we used direct substitution. And on the second one, we used synthetic division. You need to make sure that you're reading your directions carefully because if they ask for direct substitution, I need to see that method. Here it is. I'm showing it being substituted, but then I just use my calculator. Here I'm showing the synthetic division. This is algebra two, so even though we're using calculators sometimes, you still need to show something for algebra. Show me you know how to substitute when it's direct substitution. Before this section, we had a calculator activity, and they wanted you to make a conjecture about what was going on with the end behavior. We can see that when the degree is odd, the tails are going in two different directions. When the degree is even, the tails, the end behavior, is going in the same direction. When we have a positive leading coefficient, the tails are facing upwards. When we have a negative leading coefficient, the tails are facing downwards. That's something that you already know from quadratic functions. Now, when it's odd, it's going to be left tail down and right tail up when the leading coefficient is positive. When the leading coefficient is negative, you switch those tails and it becomes left tail up and right tail down. That was the conjecture that you were supposed to come up with in the first section, in your own words. So we have an odd function and we have an even function. When they are positive, that's what they look like. We have a negative function. And when it's odd, this is what happens. And when it's even, that is what happens when it's negative. So now we're talking about any function that we see that is a polynomial, no matter what the degree on it is, we can always know what the end behavior is doing. It's always important to know what those tails are doing. We're thinking logically about mathematics 
and not just algorithms. Let's test your skill. Example four. What is true about the degree and the leading coefficient of the polynomial function whose graph is shown? Multiple choice, don't even look at the answers. Look at the function itself and try to come up with what's going on here. So before we look for an answer, what's happening on the end behavior? What's happening with these tails? Are they going in the opposite direction or are they going in the same direction? They're going in the same direction, so does that mean that we have an odd function or an even function? Tails are going in the same direction. That's going to be an even function. Okay. Now, is it going to be a positive leading coefficient or a negative leading coefficient? How do we know on even functions if it's going to be a positive or a negative? If they're facing upwards in the positive direction, we know that the leading coefficient is positive. And if the tails are facing in the negative direction, then we know we have a negative leading coefficient. A negative leading coefficient. I think that we have enough information now to look at the multiple choice. Degree is odd. Now, degree is even, and the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, example five. Example five doesn't say anything about using the graphing calculator to just graph the function. This means that you are to graph this by hand. That doesn't mean when you're done you can't check to see if you've done it correctly, but it clearly does not say anything about using a graphing calculator. That means that we go to our first original plan ever in graphing, and we are going to pick some points and sketch the graph. But before we do that, we could actually have an idea of what this function is going to look like. What is the leading coefficient, and what is the degree? What degree is this polynomial? What's the highest exponent that you see? I see a degree three. Okay, that tells me that it's gonna be tails in the opposite direction, left tail down, right tail up, or it could be right tail up, left tail down. I'm sorry. Or it could be left tail up and right tail down. The leading coefficient helps me to narrow down exactly which one it's going to be. This is the kind of stuff that you would get bonus for on quizzing and testing. You're showing me that you're using logic first. The leading coefficient is negative one. Which one of these functions is a negative function? That would be the second one. When I'm done graphing, I expect my graph to look similar to this. Okay, so we're gonna pick some negative numbers and some positive numbers. Let's go with Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We have negative parentheses, x cubed. The first one I'm doing is negative 2. Remember to use the negative at the bottom of the screen. So negative 2 is the first number that we're going to try. Raised to the third power plus x squared, negative two squared, plus three times negative two minus three. Just gonna check to make sure that everything's plugged in correctly. Negative three x, x squared, and negative x cubed. Looks good, I'm gonna hit enter, and I get three. Now, instead of going back and re-punching all of that in, I know that I can go to the bottom of my calculator here. It says entry. I want to bring up that entry again. So I'm going to do blue, second, enter. It brings back that function, and I'm going to scroll over and change it to negative 1.
and hit enter, we get negative four. Now, the reason why I don't mind that you're using your calculator on this part right here is because we need to practice these skills. I'm not asking you to do all of that number crunching and to add it together. Maybe I'll give you a quiz where it will be easy number crunching and you'll be expected to do that. But we're in honors algebra two, and if you can't do negative one to the third power or negative one squared and do the operations that are here, you probably shouldn't be in honors algebra two at this point. So as your teacher, I'm trying to help you move forward, but not getting hung up on all of that tedious number crunching. All right, we're going to do zero, or I could just look at my function and know what it is. This is going to be zero plus zero, three times zero is zero. So zero plus zero plus zero in, we have a negative three. Did I really need to punch that in my calculator? All right, let's go to one. Re-entry. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to be on the negative. And I'm going to delete the negative. So delete. I don't need it anymore. That's 1. We're just trying to substitute in 1. So deleting the negative with that one and deleting the negative here. Now I have negative x cubed plus x squared plus 3x and so on. Enter. We get zero, and then I'm going to go back and re-entry and do the number two, changing one to a two. All right, equals negative one. Now I am ready to plot those points. We have negative two positive three. Hmm, I don't really like the scale of this graph. All right, I don't like the scale on this graph right here. So what I would like to do, I mean, our highest number is three and negative four. I'm gonna change this to one, two, three, four, and five. Let's just make it go by ones. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and negative four. Let's try that again. When x is negative two, we get three. When x is negative one, we get, okay, when x is negative one, we get negative four. When x is zero, we get negative three. When x is one, we get zero. And when x is two, we get negative one. What does this function look like? Do we see where we would have left tail up and right tail down? So I'm going to go all the way to the left. This tail should be up. I'm going to go all the way to the right and this tail should be down. So let's see, coming down to this point, coming back up, back up, and down. Now that I've sketched it, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So we have coming down, coming back up, and going down. It looks as I expected the function to look. Example B, we have a degree, we have a degree four, and the leading coefficient is one. So a degree four means that it could be both tails up or both tails down. They're going in the same direction. The leading coefficient is positive and lets us know that those tails are gonna be facing upwards. We haven't learned yet about how many turns a function is going to have. But we can see from the notes on the left hand side that a degree, well, we just know that when it's even, the tails are facing upwards. All right, here we go with a table of values. Let's go negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, 
and three. Just want to make sure that I can really see that picture on this one. The more points that you have, the clearer the picture becomes. We have open parenthesis negative three to the fourth power and then minus open parenthesis negative three to the third power minus four times negative three to the second power plus four. All right, I better check this one. We have four and then negative four x squared. And then we have minus negative three. Notice the difference in the subtraction sign being longer than the negative sign. So we have minus negative three cubed. And then I'm looking for negative three to the fourth power. It looks good. Whoa, 76. I don't think I'll be using that number. All right, re-entry. And we're going to substitute a negative two. Let's see here. Let's go with negative 2, 12. Negative 2, and I know 12 is going to be way up here somewhere. So I'm just going to put a little point there to remind me that it's going to be way up there. We have negative 1 is 2. 0 is 4. Whoops, this point is wrong. 0 positive 4 would be here. 2 is negative 4. And 3 is 22. We're back up here again. So we can see that those tails on the left-hand side, my point, we can see that that tail is going to be going up. And then all the way to the right, I can see that that tail is going up. But what is happening in between here? 1, 0, 2, 3. I forgot, and two negative four. Okay, my points look pretty good. So I'm going to start sketching it. It's coming down. And then at zero, it's going back up. And then for the next point, it's coming down. It's coming down, all the way down. And then it's going back up again. Now that I have the shape that I expect with the tails at the top, I'm going to fully sketch this. And there we go. Fully sketch degree four. In the future, we're going to learn about how many turns we expect that function to have. Here we were more or less just concentrating on the end behavior and then plotting some points for what's happening in between.